As we continue deeper into spooky season, we will also continue our look at the Halloween franchise that I am calling The Shape of Fear. This time I'll be ranking the top 10 kills from the entire Halloween franchise. This is going to be a lot of fun, so I hope you're ready to join me on this episode of Ranking Rumble. Purely and simply evil. Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. John Carpenter's original Halloween from 1978 is not known for over-the-top kills or even gory kills. It is known for its atmosphere. The kills are about the tension this atmosphere creates. You don't need to see a ton of blood or extreme violence for them to be effective. And I love the fact that they chose to do it this way. That being said, it's a well-known fact that I love gore in my horror movies. I love the violence. So I do also appreciate the versions of the shape that have that bruiser brody level of aggression. Obviously, Michael mainly uses his trusty knife for a lot of his kills. He's like Mick Foley with the barbed wire bat, but he's absolutely not afraid to use any weapon that he can get his hands on. And this has given us a myriad of creative kills to choose from for this list. The way I'll be doing this is I will give you the name of the person killed and which movie it's from. Now, before we get going, go ahead and let me know down in the comments which kill from the Halloween franchise is your favorite. On that note, it is bell time, so grab your popcorn and make your way to your seat. Let's head down to the ring. Starting us off at number 10 is Michael Myers from Halloween H2O. That's right, the shape himself is kicking off this ranking rumble. And I know what you're thinking. Andrew, Michael doesn't actually get killed in H2O. That ended up being some paramedic that he switched places with. Well, you know how for the purposes of WrestleMania 3, Hogan and Andre had never wrestled before, even though they had wrestled hundreds of times before. Well, this is kind of like that. For the purposes of this video, H2O ended the way it was intended to with Michael actually being killed. But the reason this kill makes my list is because of the pure shock and intensity behind it. We had never seen the shape so definitively killed before, and it was truly jaw-dropping. There's also that bit of emotion where he reaches out for Lori for that split second, and it seems like Lori is even feeling the emotion too, but it's not actually the emotion of, this is my brother. It's the relief coming over her that she knows this is the end of all of her suffering. Then comes that sting, and she chops his damn head off with the axe to take us home. It's a great ending. By the way, don't forget to body slam that subscribe button so you never miss any of the heart-pounding, chill-inducing five-star matches we have here at WWH. We're not just wrestling with horror. We're delivering it to your screen every week. Up next at number nine, we have Kelly Meeker from Halloween 4. This is a very unique kill from one of my favorite movies in the franchise. And if you haven't checked out my rankings video, you should go ahead and do that. But this is the one and only time we see Michael physically use a gun to kill someone. And the setup for it is great too. Kelly comes downstairs to talk to Deputy Logan, whose back is to her as he sits in a chair. As she gets closer with her candle, she sees that Deputy Logan is actually dead. That's when Michael stands up, revealing that he was the one sitting in the chair, and in his hands, he's holding a shotgun. And for a second, you wonder, is Michael actually going to shoot her? But no, he just impales her with the gun, hanging her on the wall just like he did Bob back in 78. This is really one of those moments that just showcases just how much Michael has amped up his aggressiveness since the original Babysitter Murders. And spoiler alert, this is not the last time you'll see Halloween 4 show up on this list. Coming in at number 8 is the Firefighters from Halloween Kills. Look, say what you want about this movie, but there is no denying that Michael looks absolutely badass coming out of that burning house. There's just something about Michael standing there with the Halligan bar, flames rising behind him. Oh man, it's just such a great visual. And it was this point in the film where I realized that I was in for a wild ride. Trust me, I understand the ridiculousness of this scene. I, I mean, it's very cliche. All of the firefighters come at Michael one at a time and he just runs right through them. But 
I can look past that. It doesn't really bother me if I'm being honest because of the sheer brutality of the scene. I mean, Michael kills a few of them with the Halligan, even lifting one of them up in the process before disposing of the body. Then he even uses the dang saw to kill one of them too. And believe me, I'm not doing this justice by any means. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. If it's been a while, you need to rewatch it and just appreciate this brutality. At number seven, we have Nurse Karen from Halloween 2. Yeah, this is the hot tub or therapy tub or whatever you want to call it. This kill, which is kind of like two kills, is a perfect example of how the second film upped the violence. Now, the reason I said it's kind of two kills is because of how the scene plays out. Bud and Karen sneak off to, well, I guess you could say spend some quality time together. So they get in this tub and it gets a little too hot. So Bud goes to turn the temperature down. In the process of doing this, Michael kills him and then cranks up the heat even more. At this point, Karen is already out and she's ready to leave, but Michael comes in behind her and she thinks that he's Bud. She starts caressing his hand and even puts his fingers in her mouth, which is just gross considering it's Michael. But eventually she realizes that ain't Bud and then Michael repeatedly dunks her in the now boiling water until her face literally melts off. It's brutal and violent and it's a terrible, terrible way to die. But I absolutely love this kill. I, I think it's great. Our number six entrant is going to be Dr. Sartain from Halloween 2018. To be perfectly honest, this one's here because, well, I was just glad to see him gone. I despise the twist with his character. It accomplishes nothing other than getting Michael to Lori for that third act fight. And there are a lot of better ways that they could have accomplished that. Even beyond that, I do not need nor want to see anyone but Michael wearing the mask. Maybe I'm being too harsh, but it really bothers me. He wants to be Loomis so bad, but he completely misses the point of everything Loomis said about Michael. He wants to study why Michael kills in person, and he's desperate to hear him speak. Pretty sure his last words are, say something. Not to mention the fact that he stabbed Will Patton in the neck with a knife pen. Obviously, we know now that he survived, but at the time, everybody thought he was dead. I have never been as happy as I was when Michael squashed his freaking head like a pumpkin. Get that guy out of the movie, and let's never do that again. Coming in at number five is Nurse Jill from Halloween 2. That's right, Halloween 2 is on here for the second time. Second movie, second entry in the Rumble. Makes sense. This one may not be as brutal as some of the other kills on this list, but it's absolutely iconic. Probably one of the most iconic deaths from the entire franchise, to be perfectly honest. It's actually kind of a bit of a continuation of the Bob kill from 78. At least that's how I see it. Basically, you have Lori running through the halls of the hospital. Nurse Jill then sees her, but Michael comes up behind her and stabs her in the back with a scalpel. He lifts her up off the ground, and I can already imagine the amount of sheer pain that she must be in. But see, that's just part of what makes this iconic. The other part, when she's in the air, her shoes fall off of her feet and just clank onto the ground. I know it seems really simple and maybe not that effective, but Michael essentially lifted this girl out of her shoes with a damn scalpel. Like I said, it's just a very, very iconic moment and it's one that has always stuck with me ever since I was a kid. I probably was so young at the time that I didn't quite grasp what was actually happening, but I've always remembered those shoes hitting the floor. Number four in this ranking rumble is John Strode from Halloween 6. Specifically, the theatrical cut of Halloween 6. And I know it's technically called The Curse of Michael Myers, it's just easier to say Halloween 6. But the theatrical version of this kill is phenomenal. John gets stabbed and then electrocuted to death, but that's not even what makes it phenomenal. Dude starts foaming at the mouth, his skin starts cooking, and then his freaking head explodes. Sure, it may be a little over the top, but it's so good. The producer's cut doesn't have the explosion, the foaming, or the burning skin. He just gets electrocuted to death and they leave it at that. I'm sure you can tell why I chose to go with the theatrical version here. Coming in at number three is Cameron from Halloween Kills. That's right, Halloween Kills is on here twice too, but hey, there's a lot to choose from in this movie, so of course there's probably gonna be a few that can make the cut. And this one is the best of the entire movie for me. Now, in 2018, Cameron is not the best person. He's actually a pretty big jerk to Allison. 
But throughout Halloween Kills, he has a bit of a redemption arc. He gets Deputy Hawkins' help and basically saves his life. Then he reconnects with Allison and they work together to try to bring down Michael. What happens is Cameron's dad enters the Myers house and the kids hear a gunshot, so they go in after him. They split up and Cameron finds his dad's body before he's attacked by the shape. Michael brutally beats him and throws him through the banister of the staircase. Well, at least his head, anyway. He then smashes him on the edge several times before snapping his neck, twisting it all the way around. It's actually kind of sad and it's really gruesome. Our number two entrant is Bob Sims from the original Halloween. Honestly, I'm not sure what I can say about this kill that hasn't been said already. This is the definition of iconic. It's perfection from the suspense, the lighting, even the jump scare of it. Bob hears a noise and investigates, thinking it's Linda playing a trick on him. But that couldn't be further from the truth. The shape then explodes out of a closet. He goozles Bob and shoves him against the wall. Then, when you think he's just going to strangle him, he lifts up Bob and pulls out his knife. Michael stabs Bob, pinning him to the wall, and then we just see Bob's body go limp. And now we get to the truly iconic part. Michael just stands there, admiring his work. We get that head tilt that becomes a recurring theme throughout the franchise, and I love it so much. Oh, I, I get chills just thinking about it. This is why I love Michael Myers. Moments like this are why I love the franchise. It really doesn't get much better than this, but there is just one that I like a bit better. Our final entrant today is Earl Ford from Halloween 4. I told you you'd be seeing this movie show up again. This one's actually kind of the whole sequence, not specifically just him. Earl is leading a group of people out looking for Michael, a bunch of Illinois boys out with guns. They pick up Jamie and Rachel and decide to get them out of town, but of course this doesn't really go according to plan. Michael somehow hangs onto the bottom of the truck and then he climbs up where he absolutely demolishes the guys in the truck bed. And then he's not even finished there. He busts through the driver's side window and he rips Earl's throat out. I mean, he literally grabs this man by the throat and rips it out. I really love this entire sequence of the movie. It's a huge part of why I love the movie so much too. This perfectly encapsulates Michael's increased aggression in Halloween 4. It's like he has even more pent-up rage than he did in the first two films. I mean, I guess being asleep for 10 years could do that to you. But... That is why I think this is the best kill from the entire Halloween franchise. And there you have it. Those are the top 10 kills from the Halloween franchise, according to me. Put your favorite kills down in the comments and let me know why you like them. If you're interested in Redcon 1 products, I have a discount code that you can use to save 20% off of your entire order. Be sure to check that out. You can also find all of my merchandise available at ProWrestlingTees.com slash AndrewDreamer or even down below this video on the channel. I have been also reworking the WWH Patreon page and I've been updating some things on there. So go check that out and consider joining us over there or you can join the memberships right here through YouTube. All of the links are down in the description below. Don't forget to like this video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the action here at WWH. Now that we've talked about the best kills in the Halloween franchise, how do I rank the movies? Luckily, you can find out by watching the video that's appearing on your screen right now. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there are no countouts for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.